Okay, welcome back. In the previous video, we had a lengthy discussion about radiosity. We looked at it more from a technical standpoint to understand how it works, what makes it work, what makes it tick, and how to get it to do what you want it to do. Now that we have that knowledge, we're going to put it to practical use in a real scene. So let's hit Control O to open up an example scene, and we'll open up the radiosity example start scene. And that scene is going to be the same one from the light tracer, except a few changes have been made. And one of the main changes was that everything was rescaled to match up real world scale. So for example, these little toy uh, blocks here with the letters are now 8 centimeters in, uh, in diameter there, in size. So to match better with real life counterparts. And that's because the radiosity engine takes scene scale and size into account. And if your scene size doesn't match up with what it would match up in the real world, you're going to have some problems with radiosity. So just make sure that everything's the right size. So a chair and max should be the same size as it would be in real life. So let's do a quick render and see what we've got. Shift Q to render reveals that we have a blown out image here. This is the same problem we had with the light tracer scene. However, it's easily remedied. If you remember, we have to go to the environment window to change that. So we'll click on this little icon here to open up the environment effects window. Shortcut key on the keyboard is 8. And we'll set up logarithmic exposure control. And we'll, we have to make sure we turn on the exterior daylight option here. And let's close that. And if we render again, now we can see something. Now, we, uh, now we've got something really good cooking up here. Okay, perfect. Now let's switch over from reduction mode to uh, iterative mode, close that window. We need to go ahead and set up some indirect illumination using radiosity. So we'll go up to rendering and we'll click on radiosity here, which will take us straight to the uh, radiosity advanced lighting options. Just move this window over here. And um, what I'll do now is I'll hit start to go ahead and calculate this. So this may take a moment, and the reason it's going to take longer than the previous video is because in the previous video we had a very simple example scene set up. This example scene is a lot more complex and is closer to a production scene as opposed to the previous video, which means that radiosity calculations are going to take longer to, uh, to render out. So I'll just skip this. Okay, so it took a couple of minutes to calculate, which was expected. And this is what we've got. If I go ahead and hit render... We can see our indirect illumination is starting to take effect and our objects here are not lit up very nicely obviously because we're using uh, pretty low quality settings here. Our initial quality set to 85% which I'm going to say I'm happy with at the moment I'm going to leave it there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to the next phase of quality control here phase two if you remember is the refined iterations. I'm going to refine iterations uh, one time for all objects and I'll hit continue to refine the solution you can see it says refining solution and that was pretty fast so let's render again and we get a pretty good difference as you can see that fixed up the scene very well let's refine it one more time for a total of two times let's hit continue to refine that it'll just take a few seconds to refine it and there it goes it's done Let's render again to see if we have a difference, and no real visible difference this time, so we're not going to refine anymore. We have to move on to phase three, and if you remember from the last video, phase three is the radiosity meshing parameters. So let's enable the global subdivision settings, and let's stick with using adaptive subdivision so we render faster. Because this is a more complex scene, if we don't use adaptive subdivision, our calculations are going to shoot through the roof, and they're going to take a long time. Now these are the default settings that um, that 3D Max has chosen for me. My scene units is set to centimeters. So if I go up to customize and go down to unit setup, you notice that I set my, my uh, display unit scale to metric and centimeters. If I go to my system unit setup, it's set to one unit equals one centimeter. So it's based on real world measurements, which is, again, vital and extremely important for your renders to come out correctly. Now these are the default settings that uh, the radiosity engine has chosen for me just by activating radiosity. This is what it chose for me. Maximum mesh size of 100 centimeters. Minimum mesh size which is 10% of the maximum is 10 centimeters. And the initial meshing size is 30 centimeters of a default contrast of 75. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at those settings. Let me collapse that uh, parameter rollout there. 
And as you can see, my solution is now invalid because I activated adaptive um, subdivision. So I'll have to reset the entire solution and calculate again. But that's okay. I'll just hit start. And I'll skip ahead in the video so you don't have to watch this calculation process. Okay, so I finally finished calculating. It took about three minutes roughly to calculate the uh, radiosity there. Okay. And if I close this window and I look at my scene, the scene has been broken up into triangles the way it's supposed to be. And we can go ahead and render this out and see what we have. So the uh, radiosity solution is much more improved. It's still some artifacting and some uh, strange uh, light blotching going on there. But that's okay. We can fix that. Okay. Right. So that's what we have here. So pretty good. The quality has improved uh, greatly. And we're going to go ahead and improve it even more. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some indirect light filtering here. So I'm going to increase the filter to 4. That's going to update automatically. I can render and see the uh, results of that. Okay, so fix some of the artifacting back there, but we still have some problems back there. I just think that the, uh, the back over there is probably not subdividing uh, enough. So there's a possibility we may have to go in here and change some of these settings, and I probably will. I'm going to try reducing the contrast threshold to 50. And that'll invalidate the current solution, so we'll have to recalculate again. So I'll reset all, hit yes. This time I'm going to increase my initial quality to 90%. That's going to increase the time it takes to render this out or calculate it, but that's okay. I'll hit start and calculate that and skip ahead in the video. Okay, it finished. I'll render out again. And not much improvement. Just by reducing the contrast uh, threshold, didn't fix up that area back there. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm just going to have to force the maximum mesh size to be lower than 100 centimeters. So I'm going to go ahead and reduce it. I'm not going to reduce it down to 10%. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce it by half here. So I'll say 50 centimeters instead and reduce the minimum mesh size to say 5 centimeters. And the initial meshing size, I'm going to go ahead and reduce that to 10 centimeters and I'll leave the contrast threshold to 50 and that should work out pretty good so I'll reset all get rid of that solution and I'll calculate one more time and skip ahead so you don't have to watch this of course okay so after uh, quite a while there finally finished uh, rendering or processing so we'll render again this is what we have not much of a difference so increasing quality and, and, and such didn't really help out too much with fixing the uh, the solution there. I'm not going to increase the initial quality anymore, and I'm not going to spend time uh, refining the iterations. Uh, the indirect light filtering is helping, but that's not getting rid of all the artifacting and whatnot. And the uh, the mesh settings down here for the adaptive subdivision are pretty low. Um, I don't think I want to go any lower than that. Doing that is probably going to exponentially increase my uh, rendering time and that's not what I want. So now what I'll do is I'll move on to the fourth phase of the quality settings here down to the regather indirect illumination under the rendering parameters uh, rollout. I'll activate that and I'll use the default settings to go ahead and render this out. So let's go ahead and hit render and see what we get. Alright so that didn't take too long to render. As you can see the uh, regathering came in and cleaned this up real nice most if not all of that artifacting uh, pretty much went away which is fantastic all the artifacting on the back wall over there went away we do have some artifacting introduced here though there was a bird in the background edit that out of the video starting again in three two one so the render completed it didn't take too long with the regathering turned on and you can see that all the artifacting that was in the back wall is now gone and this looks fantastic there is some new artifacting introduced by the um, by the regathering feature so to fix that we can go ahead and increase the size of the filter down here like we did in a previous video so let's increase that to say five and I don't want to increase the amount of samples because that's going to increase my rendering time by quite a bit I'll just render it by increasing the filter size and see what happens okay 
increasing the size of the filter uh, pretty much got rid of all that blotching that was back there and smoothed out the uh, indirect illumination on the wall so I love the way that the back looks over there the, the light coming into the windows it just uh, simply looks beautiful that's just gorgeous and you could see the indirect illumination bouncing around hitting our little toys over here and whatnot and it's looking good we didn't even have to use adaptive sampling um, just using regular grid spacing here with the uh, regathering fixed up our scene so this looks pretty good the next step would be simply to add anti-aliasing which is pretty easy to do just come over here in the red up, uh, render setup window go to the renderer tab and simply turn on anti-aliasing then you can simply uh, go back here render again and you should have yourself a nice crisp uh, realistic render the last thing that I would do however is I would go back to the environment and effects window and I would increase the amount of brightness maybe to 70 I think that might actually look better let's go ahead and do a render like that okay that didn't take too long to render just uh, uh, under a minute 49 seconds to be exact and with the brighter effect of the uh, of using a value of 70 for the exposure control it improved the, the quality of the render by quite a bit at least in my opinion this uh, nicely uh, lit up scene that's brighter looks a whole lot better and more realistic okay so that's going to do it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching. I want to thank you for uh, supporting us at i3D. And we hope to bring you many more tutorials and, and great training material in the near future. Thanks again for watching from all of us here at i3D. Uh, thanks for your support and take care. Have fun at 3DS Max using Renderosity, uh, Radiosity, and light, the Light Tracer and rendering out with the Scanline Renderer. Take care.